I'm here with uh, Graham Nasher at uh, Chateau Saint-Jacques d'Albas. Graham, you've been here for not that long a time. Give us a, a very brief introduction to your uh, chateau here. Well, thank you. Um, yes, certainly. Uh, Chateau Saint-Jacques is a, a domain that's been in existence for over 200 years. But it's only since 2001, basically, when we've changed uh, a lot of approaches to wine making. Uh, before 2001, everything was delivered to the Café Cooperative, and it's not the best formula for making quality wine. Uh, we broke the contract, uh, we've invested a lot of uh, time and money in the soil, in the, the vineyards, because it's getting raw material in, uh, good quality grapes, um, healthy grapes in, which is the most important. By investing in the soil, I mean two things. One, um, we had to rearrange the, um, the vines, uh, the trellising, we had to modernize, so they, they hang better to get a better sun and better wind. Um, control. Secondly, we had to invest uh, hundreds of tons of sheep manure in the soil. This is a hot area. Humus burns off quickly um, and so if you don't restore the, the nutrient, the organic matter in the soil, um, the vines don't have much to thrive on. Thirdly, we did a lot of analysis of the parcels of land. Remember this vineyard is broken up into different parcels separated by woodland and by garrigue and what we found was they were lacking in certain minerals, zinc, potassium, etc. And by doing select mineral sprays on the vines, this restores the, the mineral balance in the soil and it gives the, uh, the vines and ultimately the grapes of course, um, a better balance of nutrients and it, I describe it um, as a homeopathic approach to vineyard management. So, and you have a special name for it. It's a special me yes. method. It's not my method. It belongs to uh, a protocol that's owned by Mr. Jean-Pierre Cousinier. He's from Narbonne, about 45 minutes drive east of here. Uh, and it's called the méthode Cousinier. It will become protocol either 2008, 2009. Um, and it's used by a select number of vineyards uh, around the world, not yeah. just in Bordeaux, but in America. But luckily, we managed to uh, have him, get him signed up for early on and work with us. And it's been a great success. The results, the vines are able to support drought much more successfully. Remember, this is dry farming. We can't irrigate here. Yeah. Secondly, the vines become stronger against disease, which means I have to, I don't have to spray anywhere as much as you do perhaps in Bordeaux or in Burgundy. So less chemicals, better quality grape, and um, I'm not one for adding chemicals to wine. We're in the, the western end of uh, Minervois, which is one of the Appellations uh, since 1985 of the Languedoc, and again, the western end towards Carcassonne. Carcassonne, that medieval 13th century city, is about 20 minutes uh, drive from I here. I ask you a bit more per a personal question. You're not a five-generation winemaker. How did you come to making wine? Um, the question that many people ask me, I developed um, a taste, uh, unfortunately, for my pocket uh, from my university days. And <clears throat> in the work I've done for 30, 35 years, where I worked in the City of London, I worked in New York, worked in Paris for many years, um, it's always been an ambition. And I think having drunk a lot of good wine, Burgundy wine, Bordeaux, California, New World wines, you have an idea what people like, um, you have an idea what, what quality should represent. And so it's always ambition to do this, recycle myself in life. Um, and we Environmentally been, you know, friendly. Well, and recycle I'd yourself, like to yes. think, yes, that's very clever. Um, and we've been doing this now, it's our seventh year, um, and it's, it's hard work. Yeah. But it's a wonderful way to, it's a lifestyle, but it's hard work, and it's realizing an ambition, a dream that I always wanted to do. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your wines. Okay, we do principally reds and some rosé. Uh, we have three reds based on Syrah, uh, Grenache, Carignan, and a bit of Morved, classic grapes of the Mediterranean. Um, and we, we have recently planted some white grape varietals, but you'll have to wait till 2009 to oh, taste okay. them. Yeah. Uh, the rosé is principally Syrah and Grenache, uh, cold fermentation, make it crispy, make it fruity, make it, make it dry, um, and it's been very successful internationally. Uh, reds, we do three different wines where the percentage of Syrah changes, 
Uh, our top uh, range is called La Chapelle, after a 10th century chapel we have on the on the property here. Yeah. Um, it's won many gold medals um, in different countries. And so I think we've been reasonably successful in taking a place which is a bit moribund, um, just supplying the local calf cooperative to something that's now on the map, well recognized internationally, certainly rated by the French uh, books uh, quite highly. Um, but there's always progress to make. You mm -hmm. never sit back and be satisfied. Always improvements to make. So to, to be specific about your wines, you have three wines. You have the uh, La Chapelle, the Chateau, Chateau and the Domain. And the Domain. All with a nice spicy uh, regional flavor, but uh, with also very lots, l lots and lots of ripe fruit, I think. Yes, we um, make it a policy to pick uh, when the ripe is, when the fruit is absolutely ripe. And this tends to be from mid-September onwards. Mo many of the locals pick from the end of beginning of at the end of August, beginning of September. It's often a bit too early. Pips are still a bit green. You get a slightly green taste in the wine as a mm. consequence. Mm. So we wait, and invariably we have wonderful Indian summers here. So the fruit comes in um, fresh and hopefully very very clean, very very healthy because of the method cuisinier. And so consequently in the winery, we don't have to do much with it. It's a question of delicately uh, treating it in order that the fruit expresses itself in the bottle rather mm. than having to mm. manipulate it, play with it, treat it too much. People describe the wine as being very fruity, yeah. uh, being spicy, a bit of leathery, and there's a seems to be a common characteristic of a sort of licorice, mm. leather type um, flavors that, that come through, particularly licorice, that come mm. through in the wine. Mm. Mm. A low intensity on the domain, high intensity on the chapel. Mm. Let me ask you uh, a thing on another uh, subject entirely. You come a bit from, from outside to one of the very remote regions of France, uh, and a region of France which is famous for making an awful lot of uh, wine, but it's not very well known for making quality wine, uh, even though they do or you do a lot of quality wine here in the region now. What do you think the region needs to do to improve its image, to make itself known and uh, become a source well recognized for quality wine? Um, a very good question and a very difficult question to answer. I think firstly, in terms of becoming internationally recognized, um, Minervois, ironically, is better accepted outside of France than within France. Mm. In France, uh, a wonderful Burgundy friend of mine told me that Minervois wines were known as the wines of the three brothers. Because you needed two brothers either side and one in the middle who had to drink it. It had such a bad reputation 15, 20 years ago. Um, things have moved on. Um, low yields, attention to the viticulture, the agricultural side of things, um, and then the ability to market it. Um, many of my colleagues are by definition French. Many of them are not very international. They don't speak any English or a little English. We export 80-85% of our wines to about 10 countries because that's where growth of uh, consumption is growing, be it Canada, be it Sweden, uh, be it Norway, be it Germany, uh, be it the Far East. France is a saturated market and mm. so if I have to try and market our wines in France I'd be uh, eating into somebody else's market share, a dog eat dog to use the expression. So I focus on the outside and I think many of my neighbours focus still on the French market, it's a very competitive market. Um, and it's still within France is a somewhat low quality image, whereas outside people are much more open. Even in Australia, we're beginning to sell our wines. Mm. So, one of the standard bearers for the new uh, development in uh, Languedoc and in Minerva in particular, I would say, is uh, Domaine Saint Jacques d'Alba. Graham, Graham Nutter, thank you very much for being with us today. Delighted. Thank you.